I felt a funeral in my brain by Emily Dickinson. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul. With those same boots of lead, the space began to toll. As all the heavens were a bell, and being but an ear, and I and silence some strange race wreck solitary here. And then a plank of reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing then. In this case, as with a lot of Emily Dickinson's poems, the speaker is actually the one who's having the funeral. This really means that the speaker is dead. They are actually experiencing their own funeral from beyond the grave. So, if the speaker of this poem is dead, why are they experiencing this? How can they? How is it possible? I've circled for you already um, some sensory words that Dickinson uses to show that even beyond the grave, you can still feel some things. Uh, here is a list of the five senses that we have as humans. Um, so far in this poem, you have sight, sound, feeling. It's clear, um, I felt, sense, numb, heard. Uh, toll means uh, it's like a ringing of a bell, um, so that is still sound. Ear you hear, um, it hits, you're, you're touching something. So it's clear that just with the senses, this person who is dead is not necessarily completely dead. But the parts that are experiencing this are the author's mind and soul. These are the parts of the speaker that are still active and alive even after death. All right, so I just circled all of the rhymes or near rhymes that appear in this poem. As you can see, not all of them rhyme completely, and that's why I said near rhymes, um, especially at the end there is a lack of rhyme. This is because at the beginning of the poem, even though the, auth um, the speaker is dead, they are still awake in their senses, and slowly as the poem goes on, um, they lose their um, ability to have senses and also their ab ability to make rhymes. Another ex um, explanation of that is that death is the ultimate cessation of any kind of knowing and also the consummate disintegration of the sense. Another thing I'd like to point out is the speaker's preoccupation with the with death in a concept in a ta bleh, sorry context of somber meditation this whole poem happens to be a reflection and that is indicated by the past tense of the poem um, because it is in past tense um, it is obvious that the speaker is reminiscing about death this the funeral that they felt happened before so now that they are not doing anything they're remembering their death when reminiscing also, you see that there is um, a death to also the senses, and it becomes obvious in the lines that I've underlined here. I felt a funeral in my brain means that um, the brain was experiencing a funeral. It was dying. My mind was going numb. The mind is ceasing to be in a way, and the speaker is experiencing that. And also, the, pr the plank of reason breaking, that means... Um, also, there's a shift there, um, which I'll explain about later, but um, the reason everything natural in this world is no longer certain in the next world, and that's what they are experiencing when the reason breaks. I'm now going to go on and annotate each stanza individually. I'm going to separate it into four parts. And by four, I really mean five parts. In this first stanza, the imagination and everything that the speaker is experiencing seems almost lifelike, like it's really happening, even though it's just inside their brain. There's some repetition in this stanza. Um, you have the obvious treading, treading, but you also have the less obvious to and fro. This sets up, um, in the next stanza, the um, imagery of the drum. 
Also, in this stanza, um, you'll see the rhyme scheme that I've talked about previously. Um, you have fro, but you also have through. Um, this here is not an actual rhyme, it's only a near rhyme, and I would like to say that it's only a near rhyme because um, the speaker has just woken up, sort of, from their death. Um, they're just starting to regain their consciousness, and um, if the consciousness is the rhyme scheme, which they end up losing at the very end, then um, they're almost waking up, in a sense, and not fully conscious. Here in this second stanza is where I was talking about the drum. Um, the drum is a very obvious um, symbol here, and um, the drum continues the repetition through beating, beating, so that becomes almost very common to have the systematic um, pace to the poem, but also in the speaker. Um, you can almost think about a heartbeat, too. Um, Maybe the speaker is almost jealous of everyone in the audience who's watching him who has a heartbeat, and he doesn't. So he's lacking that, and maybe that's what's aiding him in going numb. Also, you can think of a drum in a sense of it being a ritual, um, like they're sending um, the dead body off. I mean, I'm not saying that necessarily this was uh, a ritual that they're doing, but this whole uh, service is what sends the uh, speaker to their ultimate death at the very end. So the whole process of ultimately dying also is reflected um, through a loss of sense. And I believe what the author is trying to say is that once you reach a lack of sense when you're going numb, that's when you ultimately die. And it's not when you just die as in like your heart stops. This stanza is showing the actual burial as they lift the box, but um, the creek across my soul shows uh, the disembodiment of the soul. How it's, um, he's hearing it, but maybe he's not necessarily in the box, he's about the box, he's just watching it all happen and experiencing it. Uh, toll is something I talked about earlier. It is when, um, if you ring a bell, the toll is the sound. It makes the resonance in it, almost like a church bell. It um, goes back to um, thinking about the godliness. Uh, was the funeral in a church? Did he have faith? Um, it's all things that you would make a connection with when thinking about the toll. Another thing to think about here is this is the only stanza that doesn't go on to the next stanza um, immediately. There is a break here at the very end. Um, there's absolutely no period, comma, or anything there that would bring it into the next where all the other stanzas all have a period that ends it so you know it's final. That's good to note on any poem because it definitely implies some sort of a shift or continuation. So um, whenever you see that in any poem, just take note. Um, as a continuation, I also brought the last line of the last stanza in for this new stanza. Then space began to toll as the heavens were a bell. So you can see how the continuation of it and also emphasizes the idea of the bell and toll um, as the ringing of the bell. Um, it becomes quite obvious what they're talking about. Um, this definitely shows um, a disembodiment from the body um, because the speaker becomes just an ear. They're just hearing what's going on, but they're experiencing some great heavenly thing like a bell. You can picture someone just surrounded by light where you can't see anything and all you're hearing is this ringing. Um, they're racing um, silence in this because you're hearing and it's just a whole big experience and they're losing touch with what it all means as they lose consciousness but all they are are the senses. Imagery wise though I think the best word in this stanza is wrecked. With wrecked you get almost um, you get a vision of a ship almost like a shipwreck. Um, and if you picture a shipwreck you picture all of the senses are being um, defined by this. You have the water, um, so you can feel the water. You have everything, just disaster all around you. And it, it's definitely um, a great big disaster that what the speaker is experiencing. 
Also, another good thing to think about is the word solitary. It means that the speaker is now all alone. When before they had everyone to and fro moving, now the speaker is completely alone. Continuing on from the last stanza with the idea and imagery of a shipwreck, you, almost, you also get the plank of reason. Plank here, um, you would picture maybe walking the plank, but it is your separation from the ship, the wreck, that is your death. Um, you also get the idea with the word plunge, because you're also talking about water. You would plunge into water. But um, this stanza is very, very important. Um, it is a shift in the poem because in this, um, this stanza is when you get the loss of everything. Um, and then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down. So you have repetition also there with down and down, and that's continued throughout the whole poem. But hitting a world at every plunge, you can just picture going down and down and down into the dirt, into nothingness, what you're ceasing to be. This is the actual death of the author, the speaker. What they're losing is their reason. Um, everything rational that they've experienced through senses is now gone, um, and they're reaching the silence. Um, so hitting the world at every plunge and finish knowing then, it's finish knowing everything you used to know. Um, it's important to see that this isn't the exact end of the poem. Um, as you can see, it ends, um, but it's not a complete end because there's no period as in most of the lines before. Um, here we can note again that this is in past tense, so the person is reminiscing. They're still living, but they're just recalling their last time that they've ever felt anything because in the world beyond, um, that's not the case. That doesn't exist anymore, so. I'm just going to wrap up my presentation here. Normally in a poem, one thing that we would talk about is the um, title, but in most of Emily Dickinson's poems, they were untitled, so they just use the first line of the poem, so that's something you can really overlook in this case, but in most cases, don't do that. In this whole poem, just note the imagery, the missing senses, um, and the gradual shift um, that occurs towards the bottom of the poem. Just That's important to note throughout the whole thing. Overall, the um, purpose of this poem, as with a lot of Emily Dickinson's poems, is to explore the very nature of death in itself and what happens beyond. That's something, as humans, most of us are very curious about. So um, Emily Dickinson definitely explored what might be on the other side through this poem. Uh, if you like this poem, um, you should also check out another one of her poems, um, Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Uh, it is very similar to this, um, but the difference is that there is no loss of consciousness or time as there is in this. Um, towards the last stanza, you start to get rid of the rhythm um, that was very systematic, like a drum, as, as I mentioned earlier. Alright, so that's it for my presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about this poem and also annotating poems in general. Um, Alright, thanks. Bye! <laughs>